Army, how you doing? What's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Bay Ragney Show. We are live. It is Tuesday night, and we are at the St. Alice Playground. Yeah. <laughs> in the school, we're in the schoolyard, and, and, and we're uh, making fun of the nuns as they walk by. Is, yeah. is it 1970-something, 1980-something? Yeah. Well, I would call it a playground. You know, we had um, – it was a parking lot. A parking lot, a parking, parking lot. lot. That's how it was, and um, you know there were there was no grass. <laughs> no, no, no grass. <laughs> Too funny. Anyway, what? Well, welcome to the show, Neil Thanks, McGannigan. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's it's funny. Like, uh, I, I literally have not talked to this guy. It, it, it might be thirty five years. It, yeah, could, yeah. So, something like that. Yeah. And um, I, I'm going to say this, and this is no no BS. And I'm not blowing smoke up. Neil's asked are any of his friends or family that could be watching. But um, so, so Neil's a few years older than me. It might be like two, three years older than me. And um, always, dude, you always, always, always treated me nice. Like, like as, as you treated me as a friend, you, you never, like, a lot of the, the, the local kids in the area, for some reason, like to beat me up. And and and, and oh. bully me, or you know, but Neil was always a good dude and always looked out for me, and, and always was just a friend. So I want to thank you for that. Of course, first and foremost, <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that uh, you got beat up and things like that. I mean, you know, we were from Delaware County, and well, I still am in, Del in Delco, but um, I'm in Ardmore, but in the Delaware County area, and um, but the area where we grew up, it was kind of tough at times, you know, when kids got in fights. But, yeah. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, um, to be nice was just something like, you know, of course, from for me, my my upbringing was like that. Just be nice to people. And um, I would never bully. Not that I would get away with that. I was a skinny, not skinny anymore, <laughs> but I was a skinny kid back then. <laughs> yeah, but. It's it's too. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny, too, because um, uh, the other. So I'm, I'm down here in Nashville now. And uh, the other night, my fiance's daughter, she, she likes to like ask questions about like when you were a kid and growing up and she was asking me the other night like did you get in the fights a lot so i was like you know the big thing in grade school like when you would get into a fight it was like you didn't fight on the, the school property it was i'll meet you at gimbal's park on the bottom level after school <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh yeah i remember that parking lot well <laughs> you, what what they, I'm trying to remember where you lived, like what what area of. Um... So I was right on Hampton Road, right like across from like, uh, you know the um, the priest house, and right down the road from the social center. Okay, okay. Right off of uh, Walnut Street. Okay, now I was on the other side of 69th Street, and mm -hmm. um, down by there was a public school there called Cardington Stonehurst. Yep. And I lived right across the street from that on the street called Kent Road. That's yes. where I grew up. So there, there was plenty of grass there. <laughs> that was a playground, <laughs> not like St. Alice's. But yeah. um, you know, I always tell people, you know, I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. I mean, it no. was a great childhood. And um, yeah, so we didn't have a playground. We had four square. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had the, the boxes painted on the, on the, uh, in the, on the parking lot out there for us. And we had the red balls, oh. and, you know, like, you could be in the face of one of those, but you didn't forget it. Or, or how about they had a? It was box hockey, and you had to wait till the the season when the chestnuts would fall from the tree, or you didn't have a puck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that chestnut tree. It was a big chestnut. There was at least one there. I remember on that one side that entry <sighs> for St. Alice's. Oh my gosh! Too and funny. Now, uh, the school. It's not a school there anymore. And no, it's not there. I mean, it's there's a building there. I don't know what's in there, but it's not St. Alice's any longer. It's crazy, man. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. Now, now it's, it's so it's funny. Like, I'm, I was like trying to think to myself, I'm like, w w were you playing guitar or were you like really into music back then? Like, I don't remember that you, you being like a musical person. I was always, I always sang. I had always, I was always singing from childhood. Like, when I was a young kid, I was in the choir. I had the, the, the they call it the cassock and surplus. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so I was in the choir and um, it wasn't until senior year of high school that I actually got into um, musical theater. And okay. I, I was at Monsignor Bonner High School and um, we did Grease. And I had a small part in that. I was the teen angel. And I was <laughs> a musical dropout. And, um, 
And I, you know, and that was like, I guess that's kind of what kicked off everything, my love affair being up on stage. So I started doing musical theater. But one day I was approached by somebody, and I, I'm trying to remember who it was, but um, to come sing for a band that they had. It was a local band called Expressway. And okay. um, they had the horns. They were all high school kids, and I was just out of high school. And um, so we did a couple of their their uh, talent shows and stuff. And then just went from there to the next thing to the next thing. But as far as guitar, I didn't pick up a guitar till I was in my 30s. Wow. Um, I never touched the guitar. And um, really, I, you know, I've been playing cover gigs for a lot of years. I'm still doing it, but always as a singer. But honestly, it wasn't until about five, five and a half years ago, I did my first solo gig playing guitar. Like I never had to do it. And I was playing with this one guy, um, a, a really talented guitarist named Sean Christie. And he said, okay. um, you should be doing solo gigs. And I'm like, uh, no, no. And he said, no. <laughs> I said, I'm no good on guitar. He said, I've seen guys out there playing solo gigs that, that are worse than you on guitar. He didn't say that you're good. <laughs> they're worse than you. So um, I started doing that. And, you know, so now I play, I play very frequently. I play every Wednesday night. Um, out in Glen Mills, a place called Ashley's in Glen Mills. Okay. Um, you, it's remember the Granite Run Mall. Yeah, I. You, it's funny. Now I was going through and I was seeing this Ashley's place. Yeah. What, what, what before I moved here to Nashville two years ago, I literally lived right around the corner from there. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I play there every Wednesday with a guy named Ryan Vallad, and Ryan's on this album that I that I just recorded uh, and okay. just released um, in back in December. Um, okay. But we play there, and it's all. I'm playing mostly cover gigs. But I do have one original gig lined up. You know, it was funny because I, what happened was I worked so hard on this album and finally uh, got it out there in December, the beginning of December. And after that, I was just like, oh, my God, I, I just had to step back from it. And the cover gigs are easy, you know, like you, you sure. got all that stuff. But this, I just needed to step back. And I, and we, and I had that big show and it was such a, a buildup. And I almost felt a little bit of a letdown after, after it was finished. Um, you know, all that work throughout, throughout the year. I mean, I started writing this in 2020 and went all the way through in the recording. Honest to God, I was recording probably like five, six weeks before the album, like we had the, the release, you know, show. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, finally finished everything, got everything set and picked up the, uh, you know, I still got some on CD and, uh, picked those up the, the day before the show. So, um, yeah, it was, it, and it was exciting. It was great. But like I said, it was a little bit of a letdown. So I don't even have a, an original gig set up until April. Um, but I'm hoping to like start picking that up again and get this music out there a little bit more. It's out there on Spotify. And I'm sorry if I'm doing your job. Right now. I know you, you probably wanted to ask me questions. <laughs> I'm just rattling. <laughs> All right, so I right, well let, let's 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 rewind. We're gonna we're gonna rewind a little bit because because I want to like I want to catch up and I want to like because I, I'm like you know. Google and uh, the this internet and um, YouTube is my friend. Okay. So, like, I find out like stuff like ha first off, how the hell did you end up doing stuff with Mike Post, who who wrote these amazing TV songs? I'm like, how the hell did this happen? Okay, well that 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 was an easy one. Mike is married to my cousin, and um, oh. but it, it's a funny thing, you know. Like, it, it, you know, when they got married, I didn't really know him at the time and um I, over the years like beyond that i started to see him a little more frequently at family things and got to talking music and everything and so i was in an older band a band called redhead betty takeout and um okay again a cover band that transitioned into some original stuff and we i said to the guys you know i know mike post we've been working on some stuff i know mike post maybe i could send him some stuff so we sent him our first grouping of music it was a few songs two or three songs and his feedback was, um, he says, yeah, he goes, uh, he says, Neil, you really can sing. Guys, you can play your asses off. You guys sound great. Your songs suck. <laughs> 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 your songs suck. So, you know, that was like, you know, people say, oh, it doesn't matter what you know, it's who you know. Well, that's not, that, that's not necessarily the case. You really need to know. And um, so uh, we had to work a little bit harder. So um, we went out there that gosh, that was in 2006. We went out there and for like, a, um, I forget how long we said, you know what happened? We went, we sent him a bunch of other songs and he said, these sound a little bit better. Then he brought us out there for a month and we hit him with some other songs that he really liked. And okay. um, 
he and his son were kind of immersed in music at the time. And, you know, his son was, and they somehow got the music to Glenn Ballard, who listened to the mm. songs. He said, yeah, they're, it's good songs. They're good stuff. I don't know what you want me to do with it. Like nobody wanted to do anything with it. You know, and let's sure. face it at the time I was, I was, <laughs> I'm still not, and I certainly wasn't then either. I was not um, any young 18-year-old girl, like blonde-haired girl. Like, look good. You know, you're yeah. older, and nobody's yeah. going to sign you. And so, sure. um, and but, you know, it was okay. And so I sort of went into this thing with with no expectations, just to to enjoy it and hope that other people do and like it. And what will be, will be. But um, I still am trying to get the music out there as best I can, but I have no expectations or no no dreams of being signed to a big recording contract or anything like that. But, um, I, honestly, I don't, you don't even want that. I, I tell people that all the time, and a lot yeah. of people I talk to, I mean, that are really you know doing this whole independent thing, and, and they're doing they're out there touring the country and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, most of and and they've been on the big labels and all, and they're all much happier doing it themselves. It's a lot harder and a lot more work. Yeah. And uh, but overall, they're much happier. Yeah. 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 And that's that's I mean, that's probably the route I'm just going to take and not worry about it. And, mm -hmm. um, you yeah, know, but anyway, so getting back to the mic posting, that's so that was the whole thing. So we got it to go out there and he was we really liked the stuff and we got to record. He had a studio at the time. He still has his studio where he does the Law and Order um, okay. things, you know, for, for TV. He still has that. But he had a separate studio at the time. It's called Studio Nine. It's not there anymore. Um, so we got to write and do some recording out there. And then we came back here and we worked with a guy named Brian Bricklin. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you recall in the eighties, there was a, Absolutely. Band and, um, so when I decided, um, it was, this was, a, this album was definitely a COVID project. You know, I just started and started working on this song, these songs. And Brian was my first call. Um, I said, Hey Brian, I, I, I got some songs here that I would love for you to listen to. And, I sent him the first four and he's like, let's do it. And so we ended up doing, doing right. a whole album. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but, well, like, like you said, you, you've done, um, you know, you've been doing a lot of either, whether it's solo or, um, band, um, covers yeah. shows like crazy. Yes. I mean, I see you're out there grinding all the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> were you writing or was this just something like where COVID and the pandemic happened? You sat down like, I got no shows. I got no nothing. Let's do some originals. That's exactly how it started. It was then, you know, and I'll tell you how it started. I was on Facebook one day and there was a guy, this guy, Jeff, that I know. Um, he moved out to California and he had posted, he had written this post that said something to the effect like, um, I have some business on the East Coast or something like that and I'll be back home a lot more often. So there was a girl um, that commented on there and said, come see me. And her name was Amber. She was attractive. Yeah. So I was going to make a joke and say, just say yes. You know, <laughs> but if, if it says, come see me, you just say yes. And I'm like, that's a song idea. So the first song I wrote was Amber. And um, and then that's how it started. So, yes, then once um, the summer of 2020 came around and I was shows out, outside, like May, June, things started picking up for me again. Mm -hmm. I had to start squeezing in the writing with the gigs because I had to play the gigs. Sure. Um, to make the money. Um, yeah, it was, that's, that's how it, every, everything started. So I had to just keep writing and keep fin fitting it in. So I'm sitting out in my porch right now, my, because my house is not all that big. So my, my wife and my son are in there. Um, so I used to say to them all the time, all right, I'm going out to the porch and they just knew what it meant. And there'd be nights I come out here, Bay, and I would sit here for three hours and not write one word. Like I, it just wouldn't come. And then wow. come out here a couple nights later and just everything just, flows yeah. yeah it's crazy how that works isn't it yeah yeah oh um yeah the album is really it's i mean i think it's it's pretty uniform in in the style for the most part it's got a retro feel to it mm -hmm. uh, there are definitely a few slow songs like you know some some one very somber song um and then the rest is you know kind of like i, I call it power pop i guess you know like a, a pop rock kind of a power pop, sure. as you call it. Um, yeah. Now, now, how about um, like was I mean, because this is I guess your first actual release. It seems like since uh, your last original pro project, there, Redheaded Betty Takeout. Yes, it is. It's the it it is the first thing I'd done, and that was that was another thing, and that was like I want to I want to do this because when I was with Redhead Betty Takeout, I was with guys that were 
really talented musicians. And mm -hmm. at the time, like I said, I wasn't really playing guitar. I mean, I could play some chords a little bit, but um, I guess I was, you know, or I, I, it was sort of like, I got us out to California. <laughs> I got, that was, and I just sang the song and I would contribute some lyrics. Um, I might change melodies around. They might hit me with an idea of some chords and, and a melody and I would change it around and kind of come mm -hmm. up with that. But I didn't take any songs from the very beginning and say, I wrote this. It was really all of them. Right. With the exception of some lyrics. And um, so this was a project. I'm like, I, I think I'm ready. I can do this. And I think it came out really well. I mean, I, you know, of course, I think that because it's the style of music that I like to hear anyway. Sure. Um, you know, I wrote it in the vein of, of things that I like to hear. But, um, you know, but I think, you know, thanks to Brian Bricklin and, and his guidance with this, it, I think it um, came out great. It, it, it sounds awesome. I honestly like I, I really um, like when I start doing getting ready for interviews and stuff, I just really like close off everything and just zone in because I, I want to get into that you know, that, that mindset. So I was getting into the whole Neil McGettigan <laughs> mindset. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I was like digging. I was like more and more as I'm listening to it over and over today, I was like getting into it, getting into it, jamming out in the car and all. Um, and, and I was just like, again, like just thinking to myself, like, so uh, this had to be like chomping at the bit for years for you. Like, yeah. I mean, you're playing, you're obviously a person who loves music. You're out there, you're doing all these shows nonstop. And yeah. I, don't, I don't care who you are. You could be just a, the most popular full-time cover artist in, in the world. You have that passion in your heart to want to do originals. Yeah. It, 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 you're right. Um, and it was, and you said chopping at the bit for years. That's exactly what it was. It was saying to myself, I, I feel it's there. It's just not coming out. I, I just couldn't get myself to do it. I just could. And then once I started, it was like, I didn't want to stop. I just didn't right. want to stop. And like, you know, I'm already itching to start writing again. And I just put this album out, you know, six weeks ago or whatever it was. It was the beginning of December or whatever that was <laughs> two months ago. But uh, yeah. Now, now, so it's it's Neil McGettigan and the 11th Hour. So the, the band you put together for this, is this people that you play with in, in cover bands or just like an all-star lineup that you put together, people that you're friends with? Kind of both. Um, yeah, when when Brian and I were recording, Brian said, you know, this really has a very band feel. Like I was just going to call it mm -hmm. Neil McGettigan. He says, you really need to reward these guys with with Neil McGettigan and. And um, so I said, you know, I totally agree. Um so we, I was trying to come up with different band ideas, band name ideas. And the 11th hour I came upon because it's, you know, like very late in life <laughs> to be doing, <laughs> finally, finally putting out a, an album so uh, of my own. So, um, yes, I wrote all the songs, but I will say this. There was 100% autonomy to these guys because they're great musicians um, to come up with their parts. Like, here's the skeleton of the song. Here are the lyrics. Here are the chords. Um, here's the melody. Mm -hmm. Fill it in, make it sound pretty, because I can't. And um, <laughs> so, yes, I, I'm in a cover band called Matt's Machine. Uh, okay. Matt is Matt's the drummer, and Matt plays in a um, a Bob Seger tribute band called Hollywood Nights. Okay. And um, he's known as Matt the Machine, the Carlo, and, and he is a machine. He's a great drummer. Um, Matt, uh, Dave Calabria is the bass player from Matt's Machine. He's he's on every song on the album, as is Matt. And Dave does some uh, harmony on the album as well. He's a great singer. Uh, ben Slater on keys and John Gatone um, plays guitar. And they're all from Matt's Machine. And then I play right. with uh, Ryan Vallada. Uh, we play every Wednesday night. We've done some other duo gigs. So he's on. he plays guitar mostly on the album. He's on five of the songs. And then a guy I used to play with years ago, um, named Va his name is Vahe Sarkissian. And okay. Vahe's on a couple songs. And I wanted to bring Vahe in. He's fantastic. I mean, they're all great musicians. And mm -hmm. even Brian himself, uh, Brian Bricklin will play. He plays on at the songs where the guitar is just him. Um, and I'm trying to, he might fill it in some other parts as well, but he does some things as well. So, um, yes, as an all star lineup, absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Now, how about the whole like Brian Bricklin thing? Like, I still, like, for me, it's like, I, I remember like when Brooklyn was starting to blow up in Philly and, you know, hearing him on the radio and everything. And even though, yes, we're in our fifties now, it, I still think to myself, like, 
that dude, like he had something to get close to the other side. Like he had, he had the major label contract, you yes. know, he's had the airplay and all. So is yeah. it still like, and, and you've worked with the guy for years now from, you know, going back to Reddit Betty, you were saying, yes, yeah. uh, even though I'm sure you, you're considering him a friend, you still got to consider him like a peer and a guy that was there. So is it intimidating at all for you? Um, intimidating? No, because I've known him. I've um, he could bark at me. <laughs> <laughs> Just to bark at all the musicians, but for the most, but like real fast and everything. And I expect, I, I will say, uh, as a peer, I would say maybe I would say more of a mentor. More of somebody I look up to because he was um, he's just light years ahead of me and a lot of people really. I mean, he's just the way he can hear things. People just can't hear it like he can. Very few. Right. And um, so he, he was the perfect person for me to go to. I mean, even, even just, you know, he can play he can play guitar. So look, I, I pick up my guitar. He goes, give that to me. I'm going to tune it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, just, um he's a friend he's definitely a friend um but he was definitely he's more of a mentor and and a guide him he guided me through this whole project it would not have been what it is if not for brian and that that i and all the musicians really um i couldn't have done it by myself you know and i and these guys they dedicated their time um they came up with great parts i mean you know for me you know i i'm i'm so inclined to just listen to vocals because I'm a singer and I'm just so inclined to do that. But to hear these songs come together from what I had written to what they came up with from the keyboard parts. I mean, one night I'm lying in bed if they're recording and hearing the bass player, uh, Dave, and he comes up with this one line on the song called We Discovered Love that I never would have thought would have been in that kind of song. And it was just, I'm like, oh my God, how did he come up with that line? Um, so they all they all took it to the next level for sure. You, you just mentioned Dave. Is this him? Let's say he's that's Dave. Uh, he was yeah. uh, very afraid to go into the studio the first time. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's him. Uh, yeah, Dave is um, he is mega talented and and he just doesn't know it or maybe he does, but he's he's um, always nervous. <laughs> he's nervous at, at our cover gigs and everything, and he's got nothing to be nervous about. Him, he's brilliant. You know, I tell him, I said. Dave, my brother and I are, are like your biggest fans. <laughs> like we just think he's great. <laughs> like he's great on bass. He can sing really well at our cover gigs. Like he's doing James Brown and things like that. And he's really, really good. He's got this soulful voice. Um, so yes, that was Dave. And yes, he <laughs> he was very nervous. I think um, a couple of the guys were a little nervous about it, you know, uh, <laughs> to do it. And for me, it's just like, come on, let's just have fun. Let's get in there. Let's dive right in. You know. <laughs> That's funny. Now, now, how about um, you, you said that you don't have another original show come up until April, and yeah. you, you did a a record release party for the album. Was it back in December? December fourth, and it was at uh, eighteen North Wayne. Um, it's on Wayne Avenue or Wayne Below. I think it's Wayne Wayne Avenue. Yeah, yeah. So, so how was that um for you now? I mean, because that it, now it's like I went into a totally different world where. Um, you're like you said, you're not doing James Brown songs. You're not doing uh, all these covers. This list of over 400, 500 cover songs that you can do. Um, you're doing Neil McGettigan and the Eleventh Hour songs now, yeah. and these are your songs from your heart, from that patio that you're sitting on over there. So, how different was that for you? It was, um, it was pretty unique. You know, with Redhead Betty Takeout, we had we did a um, a couple original shows, but it had been many years. And again, it really, I, I was singing other people's songs even then still. I mean, like I said, I, I did write some of the lyrics. I did come up with some of the melodies, but really like 80% of it was not my stuff. And I was just singing what they came up with. This was a different feeling for sure. And when when that first song hit, um, the first song we did that night on my album release was a song called Things You Already Know, which is the name of the album. And I just thinking, I'm thinking, I'm looking out there and I'm thinking, nobody in this room knows these words or these songs. They know right. And and they're so used to me singing cover music mm-hmm. that it can be received, but it was great. I mean, it was a really, you know, I mean, 
they're regular customers there they're they're to see original music anyway and then of course mm -hmm. i had a lot of a lot of family siblings and cousins and you know the, right. so, so friends were there um so yeah it was uh it was a very interesting night because it was um i I was nervous about how it would be received and how people, what people would think. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd be a, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, now when, when you're doing your, um, like your, 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 uh, solo stuff, when it's just you and, uh, up there doing your acoustic, are you able to like do like throw in any of your originals? If you, if you want, yeah, to, I or? have, I definitely do. And there's, I, usually it's songs that I feel like I don't have to worry about a big guitar solo or the big sound. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I'll, I'll select a couple that I feel I can just get right through um, with no problem. And it won't sound all that weird. And um, so I have done that. Uh, and even on Wednesdays with Ryan, we have done we've done that a couple of times. Nice. Uh, thrown, in, thrown in originals. And uh, nice. I, yeah, I'd like to do more of that, <laughs> you know, um, just to just to uh, keep it fresh, keep it keep it in my mind. You know, that was that was the other thing when we came came time to doing the show um on this de in december i had written all this stuff and then recorded and you know I, I recorded my guitar parts and i had to do the vocals and everything so some of it was months later like when we did the show it had been months and i'm like oh my god i haven't played i don't even know how that song goes <laughs> i don't remember how to play on the guitar i had to review everything so i completely forgot it so even still now i'm thinking to myself like you know there's a few songs probably two that i'd have to really think about like how does this song go again <laughs> You know, um, I had just gotten so far away from it. Hey, look, all, all, all the biggest people in the world, they, you know, they, they put yeah. all these albums out and they're like, oh, we got to go back and pull this rare track out. I got to learn how to play it all over again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that's too funny. funny. Too funny. So and now and that's the thing, too, like with uh, originals and covers, like covers. I mean, you, you've been doing it for years and you built up a, a, a name and everything in the area where you can book gigs easily but then when you go to book your originals it becomes a whole different world now yeah um you know we're playing april 9th uh, do you remember the rusty nail in ardmore of course like, that's where we're going to be april 9th and um the owner i happen to know and he's been wanting us to play there even as matt's machine is a cover band but nice. with this he he asked me to play and um i was ha i'm happy to do it because i live in ardmore that's the one but uh, he's sure. he's a He's a great guy, the owner. Chris, Chris is amazing. Love Chris. You know Chris? Yeah, he's a great I used guy. I used to book shows there, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um anyway, so uh that that one was fairly easy getting into some other places. Like I could probably try 118 North again. And there's a place called Jamie's House of Music in Lansdowne that's okay. a relatively newer venue, and it's really making a name for itself, and it's really nice. And um I sent my music uh and the guy that books the, the act got right back to me and says, I want to book you. I like your songs. I'm like, this right. is great. And then I, <laughs> I've emailed him two or three times since, and I've heard back from him. So, you know, um, uh, that's kind of how it works sometimes. You know? But it's that way in covers, too. It, you know, yeah. you, you, I can play a room for years and then go to, you know, it's trying to book the next six months, three months, and I just, I'm waiting weeks to hear back from them. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Now, are you doing that full time? Is that your full time gig? That's that's where I make most of my money. I do I do a um, I you know be a recruiter um, with did therapists for schools, okay. psychologists and occupational and physical therapists, and um, I'm with another company now. After a couple of years off from that, I'm with another company. I do it very part time during mm -hmm. the day, and then my wife has a dog walking business um, around our oh, so. I, I do some of that. And it's funny because you would never have known that I would, you know, I was, I didn't grow up with animals. We didn't have pets and um, you know, but my wife did. And so uh, she got me involved in this and now I love it. I absolutely awesome. love it. Like they're just like, there some of these dogs that I walk, I just adore them. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's, so that's, that's what I do, you know, as some extra income, what, you know, that took a hit because of COVID too, because a lot of people started to work from home. Um, yeah. So they didn't need it, but it's, it's picking up a little bit more, but yeah, music can be, you know, that's a feast or famine thing as well. You mm -hmm. know, like I'm at my every Wednesday night at Ashley's, but um, weekends could be hit or miss. Like, you know, last weekend I was supposed to play a private event um, that would have been a very 
good lucrative uh, show, and um, we got hit with all the snow. And right. uh, so she postponed it, and she had to reschedule. I just found out this evening she had to reschedule for um, a night that I'm all, I'm already booked for another private. Event. So oh okay yeah <laughs> so, yeah it it's crazy down here like when I came down here and I started like going out to some of the clubs and stuff like the you know the honky tonks and stuff like that like I, I never saw this before in my life but like these bands they're not they don't get a pay and they're all cover artists they don't get a pay it's all tips that's what I heard I heard about and that so it turns out um uh a good friend of my fiance's her husband uh, he was the band leader for Kid Rock's house band for the last few years. So we went down there a few times to see him. And actually, he's uh, that band broke up. He's got a new band. So we went and sold his new band the other day. He's playing another honky tonk. But when we would go there, it's crazy. Like, I mean, there's a couple hundred people there. They're all drunk and having a good time. But it's like people start making requests. It's like, all right, you want to hear this song? It's 20 bucks. And people, there's just a bucket. And yeah. people dump the money. <laughs> And yeah. it's like people like you want to hear Bohemian Rhapsody. We're the, and they are, we're the only song on Broadway that plays it. It's minimum a hundred hours. One song, I think Freebird. They got five hundred hours to do oh Freebird. It's like you just see yeah. people throwing money in a bucket. I'm like, this is insanity. Like I, I don't believe what's going on here. Yeah, uh, I never knew that. I found out my my friend. You might know Audra McLaughlin. Do you know Audra? She's a I, I don't know her personally, but yeah, yeah. I know who she is. She's, She's down, down there now. Yeah. And um, I saw her parents at one of my gigs one time, and I was talking to them, and they informed me of that, that that's how they make their money. They put out a bucket for tips, and, uh, yeah, there's no pay. So, it's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I yeah. guess it could work out well if you have a good crowd and they're, they're feeling generous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have a – they opened it uh, – you know, after the pandemic, they just opened this up. A, a Taco Bell, which is like a block off of Broadway – and it's it's like a honky tonk. It opens up. It's got patio doors that open up, and they have bands inside playing, and they serve alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> that's Taco that's Bell. Taco Bell. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> so come on down to Nashville and bring a bucket and just start yeah. playing. That's all you need. Yeah. yeah, I would love to get down there. I actually really would love to to get down to Nashville. I just hear it's great. I hear it's great there. Um, it's the music fun. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I have to ask you, how did you get involved in this in, in, um, interviewing people? I heard your interview with Nick Perry, by the way. I love that. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, that was really good. Um, you know, um, I'm more of a Christina Perry. I think he is. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a great musician though. Yeah. He's, he's awesome. Musician. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I started doing, well, actually, I was involved in pro wrestling for years. I was a pro wrestler. And yeah. when I was starting to get out of the wrestling business, I was starting to become a promoter. And then I was hosting a show on AM radio in Philly for a couple of years. So I started interviewing like old time wrestlers that way. And then I always had the bug. I always wanted to be like a Howard Stern. And when podcasts are starting to become a thing, like eight years ago, I started a radio podcast. And I used to do a live show every Thursday night. And I did for, I did like five, 600 episodes. And I used to do two to three celebrity interviews every week. And um, I did that for like seven, eight years. And then once I um, made the leap to move here, you know, I was going through a divorce too. And I shut everything down for a little while till I, you know, regathered my life. And um, yeah. once, uh, the pandemic hit. This is what I wanted. How I wanted to do it was I always wanted videos, just so I can see the person I'm talking to, and you know, yeah. I was doing everything like through uh, over a phone and everything. It was crazy. So yeah, this yeah. I love this much more, and um, yeah. So I just re rebranded everything when I started back up, and here we are. That's great. Yeah, that's great. A long way from Saint Alice's. <laughs> it, it is. It is. But you know what? I, and you said this beginning, you know, you've never changed our childhood. And I'll say this, the people we went through St. Alice with are the closest lifelong friends ever. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I know. I still, I still keep in touch with, uh, remember Joe Rinaldi? Uh, yeah. Uh, Joe. Yeah. We, I still keep in touch with Joe pretty often. Um, now you, um, you interviewed Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. How how was the, I? I'm sorry, I missed that one, but uh, I remember Jamie very well from back in the day when he was a little kid. Um, yeah, it's it's funny. So Jamie's in it was in my grade, and um, yeah. we reconnected uh, just over ten years ago uh, when he would come to, to town to do stand up, and we would uh, go out and see him and hang out and stuff like that. And I kept breaking his balls. I'm like, you know, when are you going to do my show? When are you going to do my show? When are you going to yeah. do my show? And he was like, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And um, the last time I saw him, like three, four years ago, I became good friends with um, Bobby Brown, the cherry pie girl from the Warrant video. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she was getting into comedy, and she had mentioned to me that she liked Jamie. So he was in town, and I said, yo, Jamie, I said, uh, I know somebody has got a crush on you. He's like, oh, yeah, okay, who? And I tell him, he's like, bullshit i said watch this i said take a picture with me watch this so we took a selfie and i sent it over to her she was freaking out <laughs> they end up getting together i i had to actually read the book because she, her second book she wrote i didn't even realize until she told me she's like go read my book it's all about you me and jamie and, and there's like four or five chapters about her and jamie i'm scared right. to read it yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah Jeez, so well. But Jamie's great. I mean, he's great. He's, he's uh, you know, doing his thing. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll shoot some texts back and forth here and there. But, he, yeah, he's uh, out there killing Hollywood still. Yeah, that's great. And I just saw – I watched your Judy Tenuta um, interview. Uh, just before that. Now, um, who who is your – who was the biggest celebrity you ever interviewed? Who? And I know that might be um, – you know, uh, Probably the biggest person in music was um, – Joey Kramer from Aerosmith. Oh wow! Yeah, that was that was that was like, like I I was freaking out like when he came on, yeah. and and, he, and he's like, "All right, bake it over. It's fucking uh, it's fucking me." And, and that yeah. was like his exact words. He's like, "Let's have some fun," and I was like, "And we just we had a ball." But um, I don't, he, honestly, I don't know. It's it's weird. Like, I've done like six seven hundred of these interviews now, and I've kind of like lost track of so many of them. Yeah. Like I, they're all up on my YouTube channel, but, um, like I just interviewed recently John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard. I've been it's the second time I've interviewed him. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's been so many. It's crazy. Yeah. That is great. And are people reaching out to you to do this? Or yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, wonderful. That, that, I, I mean, wonderful. well, you know, that's see, that's the one thing too, like. I get like, you know, emails every day from, from all these PR people and stuff like that. And I, at first I used to interview everybody, like just to try to build a name and everything. And then I got to the point where I was like, and, and I, and I might come off sounding like a, like a dick here, but it's like, I don't want to interview this person who I really don't like or care for. And I'm going to go invest all this time in to do and then promote and everything. And huh. It, so now, like, and, and I've told people, like, unless I truly believe in the person and what they're doing, and I have to like them, like, I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So, you know, that that that's, and that's the truth. Like, if, if I'm going to put my name out there for somebody, I'm not going to do it just to do it anymore. I, I want to do it because yeah. I, I, I believe in them. And I believe in what they're doing and I enjoy. Like, I'll, I, honest to God, will sit here for the rest of the night now and I'll listen to your album while I'm doing you know, my own work of whatever I got to do. That's great. Yeah, you know, I appreciate and, that, yeah. and, and that's the truth. And, and like I said in the beginning, like you always were good to me. And I, and what I, it was weird. Like when we first connected on Facebook, I was like, is that, is that really Neil? Like when you, I'm like, <laughs> Neil's doing me. Like I was blown away. I'm like, Oh my God, yeah. Neil's out there. He's like, and then I'm like, Neil's out there every freaking day playing. This yeah. dude's like, <laughs> He's really out there. Fuck! I'm like, is this? Is, I'm like, is that really Neil McGannon from St. Alice? And and then yeah. I was like, it, finally, I'm just like, it is. It really is him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like I've been doing it a number of years now, and it's just really been picking up. You know, when I when I was talking, I I do that recruiting thing, and when I had um, I was doing it at an old job, and I lost that job after almost 13 years there, and um, once I mentioned to some people that book me, and I do a lot of booking myself, but I mentioned, you know, I'm available now things really picked up just That's so awesome. I, you know i never really want for gigs too much um i can you know i'm very fortunate that way and i don't 
take it for granted or think anything about myself. I'm, I feel that I'm very fortunate. I'm able to do this and can and play frequently. And, and you know what? It, it's the same outlook for all those clubs that are going to book you. They can, you know, book anybody who they want, but they're going to book you because they believe in you and they trust you and they know you and they know the type of person you are. That that's true, and I think you do build a reputation that way. As far Absolutely. as being somebody that's that's you know um, uh, responsible, you know, reliable, mm -hmm. that they'll always mm -hmm. be there, and they, and they do the they do a good job, and they you know they're not taking an hour break, and you know things like that. like you know I, I get out there, I play, I, I like to play and just sing and just. Um, so yes, it, it does help. Absolutely. But I would really like for people, anybody that's watching, <laughs> to know about this album. And, yes. um, you know, it's, it, uh, I tell, I try to guide people towards Bandcamp if they want to pur purchase the album on Bandcamp because Bandcamp's really great. They, they'll give the artist a pretty, uh, percentage of the sales. Uh, okay. but, um, but, uh, people stream it on Spotify, Pandora, Amazon mm -hmm. music, Apple music, iTunes, um, Napster, all those online stores, you know, that should be on there. iHeart music, um, yeah. There's there's so many of them. I don't even know, like, a quarter of them. I I just know the one Spotify. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know Spotify. Well, I know iTunes pretty well and uh, Pandora once in a while. But yeah, I know. I, like, I don't have Apple Music or Amazon Music or any of that stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's a cra crazy, crazy business now. Yes, it is. Uh, Mike now, Mike Post one time said to us when we were in a, in a and out there when we were working with him in our old band and he said he said it's a it's a great time in music to make you know thirty forty thousand dollars a year playing music and it's a lousy time to try to become a millionaire <laughs> you know? it just it just doesn't it's not happening very very few people and you know you could talk to anybody and i think the big thing is playing live shows and selling merchandise so if anybody's watching or not sure about that um a lot of like you know you could stream and stream and stream all these songs from an artist and they get a very small percentage of the, of the, the money. Um, but I think where they make it is playing live shows and selling t-shirts and albums or whatever it may be. Um, that's where they, they can make some money. I, I, I could put it in perspective like this. So there's a guy I interviewed um, from a band. He's out in Seattle. Um, his name is Brad Sinsel and he, uh, he was in a band called TKO from the late seventies through early eighties. And they had a nice following out there. And then he was in a, another band called, I forget what they were called, but they had an MTV hit and stuff like that. Um, now he's got it. Like he does like little side projects in, in Seattle. And he did this, uh, he's doing this project called angels of Dresden now. And it's got Mike McCready from Pearl jam plays oh, yeah, on, yeah. on some of the stuff. Yeah. So, they put out their first song, and he just does singles here and there. And he put out a single, and he's like, it had over a million streams on Spotify. And I was like, I'm buying a new car. I'm I'm doing this. I'm doing that. He's like, I got a sixty four hour check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's well, there's, a big, there's a big thing with Peter Frampton, uh, you know, about that with, um, uh, you know, because I think the part of it is to the the. Um, they don't own the the publishing rights. They own the the mm -hmm. writers. They're, I, I'm still learning the business. So I don't know, but they they have the writer share, but not the publishing share. So that you know that takes fifty percent of it right there. But still, it's you know it's not that great. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now yeah, you I'm, have. I'm hoping, I'm hoping going forward that some of these some of these companies like Pandora and Spotify and and the such that they they start to. Um, give the artist a little bit more of the income, uh, but I don't know the business. I really don't know why it's that way, or you know why they keep such a per large percentage of it. Um, like, how do they get away with it? Is is that's the thing I don't understand? Yeah. Like, you know. Well, my friend Ryan, that I was talking about Ryan Velada, he just we were texting the other day, and he said somewhere along the line, the public decided that music you shouldn't have to pay for music, <laughs> and um, it's you know. But the unfortunate, sad truth, I guess. It, you know, it's it's cr like it's crazy. Like growing up from from being a kid of the you know seventies and eighties, and uh, even the nineties, and all we were like, I mean, I had this huge vinyl collection, and then CDs and tape cassettes, 
And it was all about buying product, 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 product. And then when the Spotify thing started rolling out the first few years, I was like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And yeah. when I was uh, my old co-host, when I was doing the, the radio show, he was like, dude, like, get it. He's like, I'm telling you, just break down and get it. You're going to love it. I'm like, I, I, I don't want to do it. I feel like I'm screwing over, you know? And then I, I broke down and bought it. And I'm like, I hate to say it. It, it, it is. The, oh, for yeah. a music fan, it's the greatest creation ever. Sure, yeah. But it, it's it's the only person making money is Mr. Spotify. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Well, so now do you have actual physical copies to you set of the CD? I do. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we could talk offline. I could shoot one down to you if you'd like. Sure. Um, sure. Now, how do people get those? Um, well, they can get them at any of my shows. I always have them with me at any, anywhere I play. You know, I have, um, I had an old band called Field of Play. It was, it was a cover band years ago. And I ended okay. up keeping that keeping that sort of as a business name. So it's Field of Play LLC. But I have a website okay. called fieldofplaymusic.com. Okay. Um, so if people go to fieldofplaymusic.com, they can see shows where I'm playing. And I always have copies of my CDs uh, there um, at every show I play. And I'll certainly be selling them April 9th at uh, the Rusty Nail um, when we do the original show. Um you know, I haven't figured it out yet or even attempted to figure it out um, on my website where people can do it. And I, I'm probably going to create a website for the 11th hour as well. I, right now, I just have a Facebook page, but I probably will do something where people can order a physical copy of the CD on the, on, the, on the Facebook page or on the website or something like that, where I can just mail it out to them. Just haven't worked that out yet. I, I got it. We're, we're getting some comments here. So okay. I, I, I got it. I got to like, Real quick, because we're going to have a little Upper Darby uh, reunion okay. real quick. So first we have oh Steve, my God. Steve Picciotti from Pal Lane. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, Congrats Steve, to you thanks. on the new album, he says. And may the Lord continue to bless us both. He's happy for us both. Thank you, Steve. Oh, my God. I haven't spoken to Steve. No, we talked about you and me not talking for 35 years. It's probably been the same thing. We, we used to go and pick. Um, yep, yep. And Great guy, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's funny. Great. Funny thing was, I actually was trying to put a band together with Steve in, oh, maybe like 88, 80, 87, 88, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, wow. crazy. Yeah. Uh, your, your, your partner in crime over there, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> yep. Ryan is, uh, he's a fantastic, and Ryan's actually putting out an album himself. It's all an instrumental thing. Um, Oh, Mostly, nice. he's got he got a couple guys to sing on it. He didn't ask me, no, I'm just, and I'm just I'm only teasing him <laughs> right now. Um, but uh, he um, he's he's incredible. And in fact, the one song I've been putting out there, um, you know, when I have to, when people say send me a song or whatever, one song is a song I wrote called Amelia Clark. And yeah. This, and um, at the end of the song, you know, Ryan came up with these great parts, and at the end of the song. Um, he came up with this instrumental thing that he said, just fade it right out. So Brian Brickland and I were listening to it and I'm like, that whole thing needs to stay. So there's a second section to the song. It's about 40 seconds long. Um, and we, I said, can I title it? And he says, sure. And I'm like, I'm just going to call it Amelia's dance. So it's Amelia Clark and right the dance and it's all instrumental. And it's just neat. Um, like uh, I guess ethereal. I don't, I don't know the word to use, but it got this really cool sound. Um, and, uh, Ryan's a fantastic guitarist. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. great. <laughs> I, honestly, I've been seeing his name come up a lot, like on a lot of people I see posting from, you know, the Delco music scene. I've been seeing his name a lot lately. Well, he's in a, he's in a, a cover band called sidearm, um, okay. with a, a guy named Bobby Perillas, who's a, the drummer who was, um, in a band called octane for a long time. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, um, and Richie Angelucci is the singer. Okay. Richie was in crystal all those years. And uh, if there are reunions, Ryan will still go play with them. He's played in Crystal Rocks as well. Nice. Or Rich, nice. he's a singer of that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Ryan gets out there. Yeah. Now, this one I, I'm going to ask. Is this your sister? Didn't you have a sister, Deirdre? What's Deirdre? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's her married name. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yes. Um, Deirdre was closer than, than, than I am. That's for sure. Um yeah, I you know you said I was a couple years older than you, and I don't want to say, but I'm probably about five years older than you. Um, Is it that much? I think so. I'm 56. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. Before I'll, I'll be 52 in April. So. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's funny. Yeah. That's, that's, I, that's my how the hell don't you have all this gray? What the hell happened to me? Well, you know, I, I shave I, I, <laughs> a little gray here, Bay, and some gray is coming in, you know, but uh, I don't mind it. I said, you know, what the hell? I'm I have some gray, but if I, I'm sure if I grew, grew some facial hair, there would, it would be a lot of gray. Right, yeah, I, I used to I used to do the just for men for a while, and then yeah. I was like, "What? What am I doing? Stop!" Yeah. And I was like, "Let it go." Yeah, that's too funny. much. I'm sitting there. With, I was literally sitting there with a paintbrush in the mirror. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funny, too funny. Too funny. So, you know, this is this has been amazing, man. Catching up. I'm really I'm so happy for you doing this. Happy for you. You know, at, at 56 years old, putting out. Finally, your your own solo. It's yeah. a solo album, we'll say. No offense yeah. to the rest of the people involved, but um, to to do an album of your music, you know, to live that dream and to be out there grinding the way you are, playing every day, man. Yeah, I give Thank you all you the know. credit in the world, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate. It. I feel very honored to be here, and I'm, I'm really happy to uh, reconnect with you. Absolutely, man. It's it's been a yeah. pleasure. So, all right, so people can go. He'll get more money if you go to Bandcamp. It's uh, it's scrolling under here. Neil McGettigan and the 11th Hour at Bandcamp. Check it out. Yep. But also, too, what is it? FeeltheMusic.com? Feeltheplaymusic.com. Feel the the, if they go there, feel the play music kind of thing. And um, they can see all my shows there. Like, we play as a cover show. They can come to that. Nice. Yep. Well, whenever I get back up to Delco, I got to check that schedule. Come out and see it. Please do, Bay. It was great. Absolutely. Great catching up. You too. And hey, unless you get down to Nashville, we'll go to Taco Bell and, you know, who knows what will <laughs> yeah. happen. <laughs> All right. Best of luck to you with that. You too, Neil. Take care, man. Congrats. Thanks, man. All right. Bye.